Welcome to Review Nation and today I'm reviewing The Great Southern Trend Kill by Pantera. This album is in your face, hard hitting, aggressive as anything, something I've never heard by Pantera before, far beyond driven, another heavy album, but this levels up the heaviness, it really does. Now Phil recorded his vocals in a different studio than the other band members since there were tension between these members. Phil also had a drug problem throughout this era. He talks about his struggle with drug addiction as well. But not only that, there's also a theme to this album. This is all about trends, like how trends come and go. And I just love the overall lyrics, the overall themes of this album. The production on this album is pretty good. You wouldn't believe that Phil actually recorded separately uh, from Vinnie, Rex, and Dimebag. Chemistry between uh, Vinnie and Dimebag, again, is top notch. It really is, especially you got the drumming, got the guitars, and how they go hand in hand. Pantera are such a unique band because they went from glam metal to groove metal, then they became their own identity in my opinion. The Great Southern Trend Kill really showcases of how heavy Pantera can get. So first of all, let's kick off with the Great Southern Trend Kill. The Great Southern Trend Kill is so damn intense. I love Phil's vocals throughout this song, not to mention the intricate guitarist by Dimebag. And Dimebag and Vinny go hand in hand together. I love how gritty the guitarist as well, not to mention the production on the Great Southern Trend Kill is absolutely magnificent. I love the pinch harmonics Dimebag incorporates throughout the middle part of the song and that soaring guitar solo. This is all about people following trends and it's such an energetic way to kick off of this album. There's also guest vocalists throughout the Great Southern Trend Kill. You had Seth Putnam who's also from the band Anal Cunt and he incorporates some really high fry screens but Phil also incorporates aggressive vocals and conveys that emotion that he's pretty pissed off at the world. So then we lead on to much more slower song called War Nerd. Although it may be slower, there are some really nice immaculate drumming throughout this song and Vinny incorporates some amazing drum fills. I love how the first verse is quite fiery by Phil. I love the fry screams. There are some really nice riffages throughout this song and the melody again seeps into your brain. Vinny and Dimebag work really well together throughout this song. song really picks up with a fast drum line. What I am really slightly bummed out about throughout this song is I wanted another hard hitting, fast soaring guitar solo by Dimebag, but unfortunately you don't get it. The riffs are catchy, but I wanted a guitar solo throughout War Nerve. But again, this is all about Phil lashing out at the media. You can tell the lyrics are aggressive as anything. Phil is in a pretty dark place at the moment. And the next song is Drag the Waters from Hell. I love the elongated growls by Phil throughout the intro. Really nice build up throughout Drag the Waters. I love the nice palm muting moments by Dimebag. The tone of the drums throughout this particular song is absolutely amazing. I love the little fills throughout the verses. The chorus is melodic and I love Phil's vocals throughout the chorus and not to mention that guitar riff is absolutely fucking magnificent. Some really nice chord progression. I can love the changing signature in between the chorus and verse. Finally, you get that dime bag solo you were hoping for. And the solo is amazing. You really hear Rex's bass throughout Phil's vocals, man. They intensify throughout that conclusion. He sounds the most angriest throughout Drag the Waters. Then it leads on to tens. It was this is a much more somber song. Again, with an infectious melody by Dimebag. And this is definitely talk about Phil's drug dependency. I really love Phil's overlaying vocals, not to mention there's some really nice atmospheric soundscape. Chorus, in my opinion, is slightly weak. 
It's a slightly weaker chorus, but the verses really redeem the chorus in my opinion. It's a crescendo and there are many slow moments. As it's slower, there's a mouth-watering guitar solo and I love the bends throughout this solo by Dimebag. No wonder he's one of the greatest guitarists of all time because fuck me, he makes that guitar sing. And that solo is one of the best solos I've heard by Pantera. Oh, intense. Then leads on to 13 Steps to Nowhere. This is an intense, hard-hitting song, one of the heaviest Pantera songs I ever heard. Drumming by Vinny throughout the intro, not to mention the drum fills throughout this particular song. Get a nice ominous guitar riff throughout the intro by Dimebag and it's really down tuned but Dimebag incorporates a groovier riff. Phil's vocals are intense as anything and this is when Seth Putnam comes in as backup vocalist from Anal Cunt. The drumming is absolutely amazing in this song. Vinny incorporates again awesome drum feels but what makes Pantera is Vinny's drumming in my opinion and Vinny's drumming throughout this particular song is just immaculate. And Vinny creates that aggression. You may have just Dimebag incorporating some amazing guitar work. Without Vinny, you wouldn't have that aggression that Pantera holds, especially throughout 13 Steps to Nowhere. So then we lead on to Suicide Note. This is about a protagonist that is dealing with thoughts and emotions before they actually kill themselves. Love how emotional the first part of the song is. The song is a build up towards the next song and Suicide Note Part 2 is one of the heaviest songs off the album. I love the eerie sims that incorporates throughout the intro. Now, now Pantera really experiments as well throughout this album, incorporating sims throughout some of these songs and this is one of the main symphia songs throughout the Great Southern Trend Kill. It leads on to some beautiful acoustic work by Dimebag. I believe Dimebag's playing a 12 string acoustic guitar throughout Suicide Note Part 1. Phil's vocals throughout this clean are beautiful and quite melodic until there's a lot of emotion conveyed. It leads on to a much heavier song than Suicide Note Part 1 and it bleeds on quite perfectly as well. Again, there are some really head bangable moments throughout Suicide Note Part 2, and Phil's vocals are as raw as fuck, and I absolutely love it. I love the squirrely guitar throughout the song. There's also an amazing groove. There's a crazy solo company with insane drums and fast rhythm bass. I love the bass work. One of the best songs off the album, in my opinion. I love how fast and energetic this song is. From what was such a slow song, Suicide Note Part 1, Part 2 is aggressive as anything, and it's like this person is actually going to commit this act. So then, we lead on to Living Through Me, How's Rap. I really enjoy this song. I love how prominent the bass is. There's some really nice, awesome riffs and not to mention tense vocals. The melody seeps into your brain and yet the song is quite dynamic but raw and well finely calibrated. So A groovy riff throughout the chorus that makes your heart flutter at times. And I love the drum line, but in the middle section, they incorporate atmosphere with different whispers by Phil. It makes you feel very uncomfortable and they do it in a good way. <laughs> Phil incorporates an elongated scream throughout the end of the song, which is one of the best moments of the album. <laughs> I don't think there's any guitar solo on this particular song, would have liked to hear a guitar solo throughout Living Through Me, How's Wrath? Because Dimebag really shines with his solos. Okay, so then we lead on to one of my favorite songs by Pantera. It is Floods. Wash away your soul. Take 
This song is seven minutes, one of the longest songs by Pantera. Love the nice clean guitar by Dimebag and the melody throughout this song is infectious at times. It's a slow building song, it's a crescendo. Love the clean vocals by Phil and a nice distorted overlay. The riffs, again, are catchy as Wash away your song, take us with the floods. I love the melody. So Dimebag incorporates cleaner guitar and distorted guitars. As the song progresses, the drumming starts to increase. We get an amazing, ominous, gritty guitar riff that is so down tuned, and it's like the floods are coming in. Overall, this song is definitely talking about the floods that end all mankind. Maybe it's talking about a biblical story. I absolutely love this song overall. This is one of my favorite songs. And then throughout this song, man, you get an amazing guitar solo, which is one of the best guitar solos I've heard by Pantera. I love Dimebag's solo. song really picks up becomes quite heavy then we get one of the most wonderful beautiful outros of all time beautiful guitar melody it's one of the best outros of all time i love the outro to be honest floods should have maybe ended the album floods would have been such a great conclusion to end the album, my opinion. And this is where the score is going to be downgraded for me. It's the tracking list. I feel Floods should have ended the album. Then it leads on to The Underground in America. The intro kicks off with some dark, deep riffs. Dare I say they were inspired by Black Sabbath, especially with that gritty, ominous, Dark, down-tuned guitar riff. You swear Dimebag was inspired by Tony Iommi throughout this particular song. Phil comes in with an increasing scream and I love how fast, hard-hitting the song is. There's some really nice, awesome drum fills by Vinny throughout. Phil's vocals intensify throughout the song as well. Again, you get a really good solo. Not the best Pantera song I've heard in my opinion. I feel that this song could have been in the middle of the road it's a good song, but it's not as good as the other songs I've heard. It's also a conceptual thing from the title track, The Great Southern Trend Kill. And it's all about trends. And Phil's talking about people trying to be cool and following trends. Then it leads on to Reprise Sandblasted Skin. These two tracks really melt together and there could be one song to be honest. But what I love about this song, these tracks bleed seamlessly into one another. And it's another hard hitting song. This is all about trends that are popular for a while that it is now forgotten and killed. And what I love about the concept of this song is that the song fades out for two minutes and then comes back in. It's signaling to me that trends come and go, and then they come again. I love how Pantera did that. And this may have pissed a lot of you guys off saying, why did Pantera have that two minute break and then have that same song fade back in? It's because of the conceptual theme, which was trends. They say that trends come and then they go and then they rise again. It's like a cycle and I absolutely love it. I love the conceptual theme of this particular album. Uh, this album, in my opinion, is one of the best Pantera albums. The Great Southern Trend Kill really made me enjoy Pantera. I absolutely love it. I've been listening to Pantera for months now and this band finally clicked with me. It, it took a while for me to click with them but once I heard the Great Southern Trend Kill, bang, I became an instant fan. They told me my favorite band without even knowing Slipknot was inspired by this particular album, were inspired by Pantera. So many other bands, especially the new metal genre, were inspired by Pantera because Pantera led the way of groove metal. I loved it. Fuck it, nine out of 10. It's a great album, I absolutely love it. This is one of my favorite albums by Pantera. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Not even gonna lie to you. The, this is the album I always put on if I wanna do a workout. 
this is a great workout album, to be honest. I love it. So yeah, so yeah, guys, comment below what you thought about this album review. Keep the discussion going in the comment section below. And comment below if you love this album as much as I do. Subscribe if you want. And I will see you in the next one.